Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are in a magnetic tunnel car. A tunnel car in a mine shaft deep below the surface of the planet Venus. As they rise toward ground level, Happy prepares the weapons they hope will enable them to rescue Tonga from two criminals. Two ray guns each. That ought to be enough. We'll have to be careful. We can't give them a chance to harm Tonga. It'll be dark in an hour or so. Then we can sneak up on them. What was that? An explosion. Dratcher's blown up the entrance to the tunnel. We're sealed in. Well, brace yourself. Our tunnel car is going to crash. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Caverns of Venus. Space Patrol! A cyclone? Uh Uh-uh. Just Johnny Jones rushing out the door to the grocery. Gang, he just heard there's a swell surprise inside of every new package of checks. Man, oh man, oh man. Uh Uh-oh, Johnny's found the surprise. A magic space picture for Wowie. Wowie is right. Gang, with a magic space picture, you can have the time of your life. First, you stare at the mysterious picture. What is it? Who is it? It's hard to tell. But then, then you look up at the sky or at a wall, and suddenly... Jumping Jupiter! I can see a flying saucer in the sky. Gosh, this picture really is magic. Magic and how? Why, with magic space pictures, you can see all kinds of objects floating in space. Objects so big and clear, you'll think they're real. Flying saucer, rocket ship, planet Saturn, Buzz Corey, Cadet Happy. These are just a few of the magic space pictures. Altogether, there are 24, all different. And you get one inside of every new package of checks. So start collecting the whole set of 24 magic space pictures today. Look for the packages of rice checks and wheat checks with Buzz Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and the magic space picture on the inside. And now, today's space patrol adventure, The Caverns of Venus. Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy, aboard their space battle cruiser T-5, are en route to the planet Mars to see Tonga, who's been in the Mars capital, Lowell City, for several weeks. Under orders from Major Robertson, she's been investigating repeated disappearances of critical materials from government and private manufacturing plants. At this moment, the commander is briefing Happy on their procedure for contacting Tonga. Tonga's code message didn't give us much information, Happy. However, she seems to have uncovered a clue on how the robberies are being committed. Where do we meet her, Commander? There's a small science library on a side street in Lowell City. It's used by engineers and other technical workers. At 1700 hours universal star time, Tonga will be in the number four microfilm projection room. That sounds like a nice, quiet place. I'm really anxious to hear what Tonga's found. We'll know in an hour or so, Happy. Contact Lowell City Space Control for landing procedure. Right, sir. Cadet Happy aboard Terra 5, calling Space Control, Lowell City, Mars. Cadet Happy aboard Terra 5, calling Space Control, Lowell City. Here we are, Dratcher. This is her apartment. Try the door. It's locked. Yeah. This electronic key will open it. We'll have to work fast. She may come back any minute. Close the door. Okay, Wharton, get busy. Look through the desk. I'll search these built-in drawers. Okay. Well, personally, I don't think the girl's a space patrol agent at all. Oh, you don't, eh? Well, she's only been working at the electronics plant for three weeks, and she wanders all over the factory, into every section. That's just a gad about. You know how some women are. Maybe she's just ambitious. Wants to advance. Well, she's too ambitious to suit me. Here. Look at this. What is it? Notes on various employees at the plant. Just listen to this. Hastings frequently less to leave his section after work. Drives expensive surface cars. <laughs> Maybe she's got a crush on Hastings. Yeah. Anyway, let her watch him. Hastings isn't one of our men. And here's a sketch of the shipping room and a schedule of the departure time. Well, there still isn't much to worry about. She can't find out how we operate. Maybe not. But I will have to watch her from now on. 
Come on, let's get out of here. All right. Hey, wait a minute. Look at this. It's just a pill. Yeah? Well, look at it closely. One of the amnesia dream pills. That's right. We'd better take it before she has it analyzed. Uh, how do we know this is the only one she has? If she finds out there is chemical in these tablets which will give a person a partial lapse of memory. She'll know how we smuggle things out of the factories. Yeah, we can't take any more chances. Find her, trail her. And the first chance we get will fix her so she won't cause any trouble. Here's projection room four, Dodger. The microfilm projector's running. Yeah, I hear it. She must have the lights off if she's running the machine. I know where the switch is. Good. Open the door and turn the lights on quickly. Come in, come... Oh, oh I'm sorry. This room is in use. Yeah, we know. Shut the door, Wharton. I'll turn off this projector. What's the meaning of this? Get out of here right away. I'll call the attendant. The attendant is locked in the cloakroom. There's no one else in the library. I don't know who you are, but I've seen this other man at the factory. I'll report him to the superintendent. You won't report anything to anybody. You've done your last bit of spying. What are you talking about? What are you holding behind your back? Come on. Let's have a look. Here, hold it. Let go of me. It's an envelope. You'd like to commend the quarry of the space patrol. What's in it, Dutcher? A copy of the papers we found in her apartment. In the security department, Kemet's report on the anti-radiation pills. He's listed two grains of amnesodrine among the ingredients. His comment is, enough to cause temporary and partial lapse of memory for a period of one hour. Well, lucky we followed her here. Come on. We'll take her out to the back door to our surf car. Why not finish her off here? Not a bad idea. There's nobody in the building. <laughs> Take your hands off me. There's no use struggling, sister. All right, let's go, Ohio. Uh, it's Corey. Get him. Let me say, John Morton, I'll get him with this chair. Commander, look out. It's not cold. Now let's finish them both. No. Corey may have somebody outside. Get those papers and let's get out of here through the back door. All right. Commander. Commander. <sighs> Now we've got to stop them. Commander! Commander, somebody locked the attendant in. Congo, what's happened? Two men knocked the commander out. They ran out the rear door. Are you all right, Commander? Yes. They took the evidence I had for you. We'll get more. Meanwhile, we know who we're after. Let's get to Lowell City headquarters and send out an arm. We'll put guards at the spaceport. And this fellow Wharton worked at the electronics plant, huh? That's right, Commander. Dratcher I'd never seen before. Oh, it's the intercom. I'll get it. Colonel Carter's office. Commander Corey here. Oh, I'll take the message. I see. Well, good work, Major. Thanks. That was Major Blake. He's making a complete check of the electronics plant. The employees you mentioned will be brought in for questioning. I'm afraid that will do much good, Commander. Oh, yes, the amnesodrine. As Dr. Ryan explained it to me, the amnesodrine doesn't interfere with a person's ability to carry out routine tasks. If he's told to do some apparently harmless act, he'll do it. But an hour or so later, he'll have forgotten it. Well, then it's no wonder Dratcher and Wharton's gang could get away with thousands of credits worth of equipment and materials. They had perfectly honest people doing their dirty work. Why do you suspect the pills in the first place, Tonga? Well, it took a lot of little incidents before I really got to wondering. Once I misplaced a test meter. One of the girls said I put it on a bench. Mm -hmm. I was certain I hadn't. But there it was. I had no recollection of putting it there. Later, I noticed other people forgetting things. All of a sudden, it occurred to me that in every case, we'd been given an anti-radiation tablet. Commander. Oh, yes, Happy. The duty officer just got a report from the captain of the spaceport guards. About Ratcher and Wharton? Well, no, sir, at least not directly. But they've traced some stolen equipment to a small robot cargo ship at the port. Have the guards removed the equipment? No, sir, they're standing by for orders. Oh, that's a break. Now, maybe we can find out how Ratcher and Wharton dispose of these stolen supplies. How, Commander? You're going to put a miniature spaceophone tracer transmitter in that ship. By keeping spaceophone fixes on it, you'll know where it is from the minute it blasts off till it lands. Come on, Happy, let's get to the spaceport. There's no one around the ship, sir. Okay, Happy, let's get aboard quickly. It's 
dark enough at this part of the field. Don't flash your atomic light, Happy. One of Dratcher's gang may be watching. Got the transmitter? Right here, sir. Come on. Maybe they won't take a chance of blasting off this robot ship, Commander. I think they will. I want to get this evidence out of the way. Open the hatch, Happy. Now, wait till I close the hatch before you turn on your atomic light. Yes, sir. Well, we put the tracer transmitter, sir. Up in the control compartment. We'll conceal it just in case someone comes aboard before blast off. They must not be planning to blast off right away. Space control tower hasn't been notified. Mm, let's take a look at this cargo section, Happy. I'd like to see what's in here so we can identify it later. All right, Commander. Shine your light around. Wow. This hold is really loaded. Mm, look at this stuff. There's a fortune and equipment in here. And stolen by people who didn't even realize what they were doing. Whoever loaded this robot ship knew what they were doing all right. Hey, how did that passageway door close? Slam shut. Open it, Happy, and prop it open till we finish inspecting this hold. It's stuck. Here, I'll give you a hand. That's locked. Somebody slammed it on us. I didn't hear anybody out there. We have tripped an automatic mechanism, electronic beam. Well, how are we going to get out? Hey, Commander, hang on. The ship's blasting off. Well, so we'll find out where the ship's going sooner than we expected. You're lucky we got that tracer transmitter. Uh, yeah. You can send a distress signal. Turn it on, Happy. Sir, I I haven't got the transmitter. What? I left it in the forward compartment, and it isn't even turned on. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. How does he do it, gang? He sees flying saucers in the sky. He sees a robot man on the wall. He sees the planet Saturn floating in the clouds. You bet I do. And sometimes, up there in space, I see a rocket ship or a speeding jet car. Gang, how does he do it? What magic power does this boy have? No magic power to it. Magic space pictures. That's my secret. Yes, sir, gang. That's the secret. Magic Space Pictures. And with these wonderful pictures, you can see flying saucers and robot men in the sky, too. You can even see pictures of Tonga in the sky and Mate Robertson and Carol. Pictures so big and clear, they practically look real. It's fun, gang, and it's easy. You just stare at the Magic Space Picture, look up into the sky, and zowie! The magic goes to work. There in the sky, you see the Magic Space Picture, real big and real clear. There are 24 different Magic Space Pictures, and you get one inside of every new package of checks. So start collecting these wonderful Magic Space Pictures now. Swap them with your pals. Be the first one in your gang to have the whole set of 24. Just get the new packages of Rice Checks and Wheat Checks with Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy on outside and the amazing Magic Space Picture on the inside. <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Caverns of Venus. Buzz and Happy entered a robot spaceship at a Lowell City spaceport on the planet Mars to install a tracer spaceophone transmitter. In this way, Buzz hoped to learn the destination of the ship being used by a gang of thieves to transport stolen equipment. But Happy left the transmitter outside a cargo hold. While they were inspecting the stolen loot, the door slammed shut, locking them in the hold. Then the robot ship blasted off, leaving the unwilling passengers with no way to summon help. For hours now, Buzz and Happy have been trying vainly to force open the heavy metal door. Happy, notice the deceleration? Yes, sir. Hey, we're going to land. It's about time. We must be nearly to Pluto. Well, it hasn't been as long as it seems, Happy. What a bad break, my leaving the transmitter outside the hold. I've gotten this into a fine mess. Oh, it wasn't your fault the door slammed shut. But, sir, nobody knows where we are. We don't even know. Well, we know this much. When that door opens, we're going to be in for a nice battle with whoever is going to unload this stuff. Commander, I just thought of something. What if we land on a moon without air? Uh, the men will be wearing space suits and we'll be finished. But if there is an atmosphere, we stand a fighting chance. Get your ray gun ready, Hap. The ship's landing. Commander, aren't they going to open that door? We've been sitting here for an hour. Maybe they just wanted to get the ship off Mars. Yeah, and, and just leave it sit here on, well, wherever we are. It's not a very cheerful thought, but it's a possibility. Well, sir, we can't stand this much longer. The oxygen must be just about all gone as it is. Uh, I'll get kind of sleepy. I'll try to stay awake, Cap. When that door opens, we've got to be ready to give a good account of ourselves. Uh, sure. I'll do my best, I'll... Awful sleepy, but 
I don't... Happy. Uh, Happy, wake up. Happy, don't go to... <laughs> now, isn't that touching? Both of them sound mm. asleep. <laughs> <laughs> there are ray guns in their hands. It's lucky I forced the sleeping gas under the door. Yeah. Now, what are we doing with them? We'll take them to the stone house and lock them up. When they wake, we'll find out how much the space patrol knows about us. Then what? We'll wait to see if this robot ship has been trailed. If not, we'll know we're safe here on Remus. Well, if the ship were being followed, whoever it was would be here by now. Let's play it safe. If we're cut, I want to produce Corey alive. I'll carry Corey. You take the cadet. Okay, gotcha. Uh, that's heavier than he looks. <coughs> Corey's no lightweight either. All right, let's get going. Uh, what was that? Oh, I guess I kicked one of their tama lights rolled over there somewhere in the dark. Uh, take it easy going down that ladder. Come on. Come on. Hurry, wake up. You two cadets have had a nice long nap. Snap out of it. Hey, hey, what's a big idea? Leave him alone. Ah, so Corey's awake. Now we can talk. Dratcher and Wharton. That's right. Our meeting in the library on Mars was somewhat brief, but I see you managed to catch our names. Too bad that girl spy of yours isn't along, Corey. This is make a nice reunion. <laughs> She's back in Lowell City getting information on you guys that'll fix your rockets for good. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Now, tell us what information does she have. Come on, let's have it. Corey, you and the cadet better speak up. You're a long way from help. Where are we? You're on Venus. A very rugged, remote part of Venus. Well, that tells us a lot. Well, it doesn't matter. But since you're so curious, uh, do you know the Gorbeton Mountain region? Yes. You're right in the heart of that range, near the old Tungsten mine. This is your chief hideout, I suppose. Ah, it's more than that. This rock house is only a part of our merchandising venture. Yeah, quite a bit of it is underground. We got thousands upon thousands of credits worth of equipment stored away in the lower levels of the mine shaft. And enough food and water to last us for years, along with a supply of weapons. All set to stand a siege, huh? If necessary. However, I don't think that situation will arise. You see... Wharton and I are the only ones who know you're here. How did you get off Mars? You weren't in the robot ship, were you? No. We managed to get a ship belonging to a member of my organization. We controlled the robot ship from there. One of our men saw you get aboard and space phoned us the information. Mm -hmm. uh, now that we've been so free with our information, suppose you tell us... Gotcha. Uh... Listen. What? Uh, thought I heard a spaceship. Uh, I don't hear anything. <sighs> Guess I'm getting jumpy. Yeah. Uh, all right, Corey. Just what information does the space patrol have about Wharton and me? You're wasting your time, Dracha. I have plenty of time. Sorry I can't say the same for you. Perhaps a few hours or days without food and water will loosen your tongue. Come on, Wharton. Let's leave our guests alone for a while. Lock the door as we leave. Gee, sir, I'm sure hungry. Try not to think about it, Happy. Yes, sir. I wish there was some way to break out of this place. The walls are a foot thick. Yeah, if I could be sure where Dratcher and Wharton are, we might try the window. Yeah. We'd better do it before we get too weak. Oh, the fluoride glass won't break. We could pry the lock loose, but well, there's nothing to pry with. I've looked. There's not even anything under the bed, if and call that hunk of junk a bed. The bed? That's it. Huh? Well, how can we pry it with a bed? It's got a steel frame, Happy. If we can work the bolts loose, we can use one side of the frame as a crowbar. It's great, Commander. Let's get to work. It's going to be a tight squeeze getting through the window, but as soon as you hit the ground, head for Dratcher's spaceship. Right, sir. Well, at least we've got one break. Hey, these bolts are loose. Looks like we won't have any trouble with this. Now, Corey may not be ready to talk yet, but I'll bet that cadet's getting mighty hungry. What you ought to do is separate him. We could probably work on the cadet if the commander wasn't there to bolster his courage. Mm, you may have something, Wharton. It's worth a try. We'll go to the stone house and take the cadet out to our shack. 
I got you. Yeah. Look, they're out. They're running for your ship. Yeah. Quick. Head them off. Hurry, Happy. Into the ship. They're cutting us off. They've got ray guns, too, sir. I head the other way toward the mountain. Yes, sir. We'll hide till it's dark. Let him go. Why waste our breath running? What are we going to do out there in the mountains? There is no food or water. Okay, you're right, right there. They'll come crawling back in a few hours. Well, if they don't, we just saved ourselves a nasty job. We've got to keep watching those spaceships off. Yeah, we'll take turns. Horton, just keep walking and don't turn your head. Well, what's the matter? You did hear a spaceship after all. That poor girl has come here. What? Yeah. She's hiding around the corner of the shack. She armed? Yeah. Ray gun. Pretend we're going to walk right past the shack. I get you. Okay. So, uh, why should we take 10,000 credits now when we can get twice that much by waiting a few weeks? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, Dracha. But on the other hand, we could use a little ready cash. Well, I'm not saying we can, but... Oh, oh, take the trade on this. Oh, please. We said drop it. You hold still and you won't get hurt. You made a very bad mistake by coming here, Tonga. What have you done with Commander Corey and Happy? They aren't around right now. But I think they'll be back before long. When they get a look at our new visitor. I guess they aren't coming after us. No. We'll wait till dark, then try to surprise them. Let's rest a minute. And they're standing down there by the shack. I can... Hey, Commander, it looks like there's somebody with them. Smoking rockets, Commander. It's Tonga. How did she get here? You just pop out of the ground? Wharton did hear a spaceship after all. She must have landed on the other side of the mountain. We can't leave Tonga with those two rats. What'll we do now? Wait a minute. Dratchus said there were food and weapons down in the mine shafts. Hey, that's right. There must be an opening up there. A few hundred yards. Come on. We're in luck. A tunnel car. But it looks like there's no power. It's a magnetic car with self-contained power unit. Can zip down the shaft and come back with food and ray guns. Get in, Hap. Hey, this thing's just like a miniature spaceship. Only much simpler to operate. Shut the door and shove off. Here we go. the controls of the robot ship and my space cruiser, Tonga, in case Corey and the cadet try to pull a fast one. They'll find a way to get you. Yeah? Well, I found something, too, in the robot ship. This miniature space phone transmitter. So that's how you traced us here. Not entirely. When the commander and Happy didn't come back from the Lowell City spaceport, I blasted off on the trajectory that space control said the robot ship was on. I didn't hear the tracer signal until the robot ship had landed. What? Wharton must have kicked it on when he dragged the cadet out of the ship. Gretchen, we got a problem. Wharton, I told you to go over the mountains and smash the controls of Tonga's ship so Corey can blast off. He's not going over the mountain. He's going under it. Corey could have gone down in the mine ship. What? Could have taken the tunnel car. They'll be back up here in a few minutes with weapons of their own. We got to stop them. How can we? Get some cosmic detonators and close up the opening. No. No, you can't do that. I'll watch the girl. Hurry. Bless that tunnel lantern. Two ray guns apiece. That ought to be enough. We'll wait till dark and sneak up on them. There's the entrance up ahead. What was that? Commander, look out up ahead. Stop! The tunnel's caved in. Brace yourself. We're going to crash. Are you all right, Happy? I just bumped my head a little, but I'm okay. Yeah, they've blown up the tunnel entrance. There are tons of rock between them and the surface. Well, how are we going to get out? Get out of the tunnel car, Happy. Bring your tunnel light. Hey, shine your light over there. Seems to be a small side passage this side of the cave in. That's funny. I didn't notice that passageway when we came in. Let's have a look. You can't leave them down there in that shaft. You can't. Then just how would you suggest we go about getting them out? You'll pay for this. 
Uh, watch the girl. No, no, you don't. I'll fix both of you. Oh, you will, huh? Tie her up. We can't wash her all the time. All right, watch your Wharton. Call him up. Look out, Commander. Take care of Wharton, Happy. <laughs> 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 Well, Wharton won't bother us for a while, Commander. That's enough, Gary. Get up. Have the guns happy? Yes, sir. Oh, Commander, and happy. I-, I thought they had you sealed in the mine. Now, we found a passage leading to a small opening several hundred yards up the slope. Another opening? I didn't know there was one. The explosion must have opened up an old passageway in the mine. Huh? That just shows you, Dratcher. You don't know your own mine. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment with a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Yes, sir, gang, there's twenty-four different magic space pictures. And Buzz Corey wants you to have all of them, just like real space patrollers do. There's three of Buzz Corey, and they're all different. There's two of Cadet Happy. And two of Tonga. There's a magic space picture of Buzz Corey's insignia. And the space patrol badge. There's a space liner pilot. A picture of Major Robertson. A jet car. A flying saucer. A rocket ship. A planet Saturn. A space pirate. The deadly iron fist. And all kinds of other magic space pictures. They work real easy, gang. First, you stare at the mysterious picture. What is it? Who is it? You can't tell. Then you look up at the sky or at a wall. And hocus pocus, the magic goes to work. You see a giant space picture floating in the sky. And it's so big and clear, it almost looks like the real object or person. Fun man, old man. So, gang, start now. Collect all 24 of the magic space pictures. There's only one place to get them, and that's inside of every new package of checks. So look for the new packages of rice checks and wheat checks with Buzz Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and the swell magic space picture on the inside. (laughs) And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are exploring a deserted city on the planet Saturn. As they enter a room filled with precious gems, a stealthy figure slinks to the door and aims a ray gun at them. Look out, Commander. He's got a ray gun. He's firing. Quick, Cap, run down that passage. Keep going. He's right behind us. It's dark in here. He won't be able to see us. Uh Uh-oh. Commander, it's a dead-end passage. We're trapped. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Forgotten City, when wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! Boys and girls, this is your commander with a vital message. Answer the call of the helpless by giving like a real space patroller to the 1953 American Red Cross Fund. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Glenn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Nina Berra, Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This transcribed program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>